Lucy Shrimpton here and in this episode I'm going to share with you how you can help your teething baby or unwell child to get the best sleep possible as well as the biggest mistakes so many of us make when our little ones are ill. Babies and young children are unwell quite often. Of course there is teething which might feel endless and the common coughs and colds and runny noses, which may be more prevalent in children who attend daycare, is totally fine and in some ways beneficial to them as it will help develop their immune systems and make them stronger. But a teething or poorly little one can struggle to sleep for a number of reasons. Firstly, teething pain comes from the buildup of blood pressure in the gums and during the daytime they tend to alleviate this pain by chewing on things and biting on things which releases some of that pressure. At night time when they're resting, the pressure can build up to a point that the pain disturbs their sleep. Also, sucking draws blood to the gums and can increase the pressure too, so bottle feeding, breastfeeding and dummies, pacifiers, can all add to the pain. Some little ones will reject or fuss over feeds because they want the milk and they want something in the mouth where the pain is, but it also hurts, so they may feel a bit confused and conflicted about it. Have patience with this and if you have any favourite teething pain relievers it might be a good idea to use them about 10 minutes before that last feed at bedtime just to ensure that they take a good feed before they go down for the night. It might help to have a teething toy that is safe of course close by during the night. Your little one might seek some extra comfort when teething so consider how you can offer this without completely changing your routine or throwing out the rule book. <laughs> the same goes for illness and typically the common cold. Congestion is the worst for sleep as it makes it harder for us to breathe and it always tends to be worse at bedtime when we first lay down. Depending on the age of your little one, you may be able to safely alleviate uh, sorry, elevate one, um, one end of the cot or the crib or use an extra pillow for an older child just to ease the congestion. Only do this if it's safe. So like with a crib that has elevating feature and um, make sure it's age appropriate. Humidifiers can help with congestion as well as a steamy bathroom experience right before bedtime. If you're in the middle of sleep training with your little one when, when Ill illness strikes, you may decide to pause until they're over the worst of it. If you do, try to maintain the stage you've got to. So don't try to progress with your plan, but also don't go backwards by totally stopping what you're doing. See how you can best keep going as you are, perhaps with a little extra reassurance and assistance but without a total throw out of all the hard work you've been doing. I like to say, alleviate, don't deviate, as a helpful little reminder. As parents, we often overcompensate when our young ones are under the weather because we feel helpless and want to make things better for them. In fact, it's probably more for you than for your child and that's something worth asking yourself. Am I doing this for my baby or am I doing this for me? Who is this going to help to feel better? So ask yourself that question. So stick to your routine because the routine itself doesn't need to change. Add in some extra comfort as needed, but without overdoing it or undoing your rules and boundaries. <laughs> if your little one sleeps in their own cot or bed, sleeping in your bed is not going to take away the pain or discomfort. If you feel worried and want them close by, set up camp in their room and change your sleep location rather than theirs. As soon as your little one is over the worst of it, try to get back on track or continue on with your sleep training plan if you're following one. You don't need to wait for a full recovery. Just on the mend and feeling brighter and you're good to get back on with things. The less you change, the easier it will be to get back on track. And lastly, what if they're sick or you have a clean-up operation to do in the night? Deal with the mess as calmly, quietly and swiftly as possible with the least amount of light you can manage in. If you can get enough light from outside the room coming in, you won't need to turn full lights on in the room and then more deeply disrupt your little one's ability to get back to sleep. 
have spare sheets and clean up materials at the ready if you suspect raw materialing or soiling is likely and make things as clean as you can in the night even if something like carpet might need that extra scrub in the morning of course you'll want to soothe and reassure your child and if there are two of you on hand one can clean up while the other comforts the child but if you're dealing with it alone softly use a low level almost whisper voice to reassure your little one while you clean up swiftly and then you can offer a little more comfort to settle them then back to sleep it's going to happen to all of us babies and young children all go through teething and sickness multiple times so being prepared can really help Remember, it doesn't need to be something that completely throws off their sleep for months on end. Just follow the tips I've shared and you can be back on track pretty quickly. If you found this helpful, please let us know in the comments and share this with a friend because you know someone who needs this today. Until next time, stay happy and healthy and sleep soundly. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.